Hello, and welcome to the Satellite Image Deep Learning Podcast. I'm Robin Cole, and I'm delighted to bring you an episode that showcases the entrepreneurial spirit within our community. In this episode, I had the pleasure of meeting Derek Ding and learning about the groundbreaking platform that Derek's company is developing. This platform aims to revolutionize the way researchers and engineers deploy and monetize their machine learning models. What makes Derek's story even more intriguing is that he doesn't have a traditional background in remote sensing. However, fueled by ambition and a desire to introduce new technologies, he is determined to transform the landscape of the Earth observation data market. My conversation with Derek was thought-provoking and offered valuable insights into the innovative possibilities within our field. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, Derek. Welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, good, good. How are you, Robin? Yeah, fantastic. Looking forward to hearing about uh, your story. Do you mind giving us a quick introduction to yourself and also the, the task that you're working on? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Derek. I'm from uh, DLT GmbH. Uh, it is a Austrian startup currently incubated by European Space Agency. Um, and we are working on a DSI platform to help the JS researchers to monetize their algorithm and also built a wider platform to kind of solve the issues in currently in the Earth observation uh, data market. I see. So the the challenge here is there's lots of different algorithms people are developing. They're all developed in different places. You want to create a platform which will centralize these algorithms and also provide a marketplace for people to use those, right? We are more like creating a uh, blockchain system that's putting all the GS algorithms, AI models as sort of smart contract so that when the researcher uploads to the uh, blockchain itself, and when the end user uh, call those functions as calling a smart contract, they will get remunerated uh, automatically. So as a sort yeah. of token incentive. So it's more like uh, we would say we are building a completely permissionless open source um, uh, de decentralized application for people to do that. Fantastic. And you mentioned it's open source. So does that mean that you're developing the, the platform in public? And how does that look? Yeah. Yeah, the platform is basically a D app that contains, uh, first of all, we are relying on the RRIV at the moment, and we are building the smart contract stacks uh, on top of RRIV. And for the researcher's point of view, they are just implementing their algorithms as usual, and our uh, compiler will convert it into the uh, WASM bytecode, which is which is WebAssembly bytecode that is will be deployed on chain and uh, can run automatically. So from the researcher point of view, we hope that they shouldn't feel any difference than the uh, usual development, mm -hmm. but rather adding a few uh, functions, say, I want to receive money at this address for this uh, amount. Right, okay. So let's just walk through that. If I'm hypoth I've hypothetically developed a model that does, I don't know, aircraft detection, right, object detection, uh, it's in some PyTorch format. How do I get it onto your platform or what does the experience feel like once it's live? Uh, so ideally, uh, the PyTorch code is, uh, to some extent, a, a bunch of a Python code, right? Uh, so our AI compiler will convert it into uh, two parts. Uh, first one is the WebAssembly bytecode, and another part is uh, WebGPU code. And all of them will be at the common stacks uh, that um, fitting into the WASM runtime that the nodes uh, of blockchain can understand. So from the, uh, the blockchain point of view, um, they're just running a sort of smart contract and they can't really feel the difference. Mm. Of course, from the researcher point of view, they need to add a few uh, uh, functions. Like uh, if you call this algorithm, then I need to receive how much remuneration, or I decide to go through the marketing, uh, like the market auction, to automatically get a dynamic pricing. So that is uh, more like a, another smart contract development, but that would be very very light because it just matter of what how would you decide to choose your remuneration. Mm -hmm. um, and apart from that there's not much difference. So we are developing the Python APIs as well so that the researchers can add a few functions in there. It's like calling the Panda, like call Panda, import Panda, and I just add a few uh, functions. Mm. Fantastic. And you mentioned that the models are going to be running on the web 
platform so in the browser is that right um there so i mean blockchain itself is a back end right um but uh, there are other front end which you can't really use blockchain to run it unfortunately so that would be more like a open source front runner and we're building a open source um, uh, flutter map plus the desktop clients uh, so that anyone can run their own front end and uh, deploy the geo uh, server as well. But, mm -hmm. but the back end would be the same, which is all the information will be on chain, algorithms, data will be on chain, and it is powered by the smart contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, just the, the front end, anyone can run the different version of it. Okay. All right. So if I if I zoom out, um, let's say I'm an I'm a user. I want to use one of these models. What kind of interface do I get on the platform, and what's the experience going to be like? Um, have you played around with OpenSea by any chance? Open OpenSea. OpenSea. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm it's not it's one that. of the NFT platform for people buying some stupid GPGs uh, and uh, and the pictures. Okay. Um, well, the experience would be pretty much the same. So basically, um, uh, first of all, I'll show you a video link uh, later. Uh, it's basically that you choose the uh, area on the leaflet uh, map mm -hmm. and uh, choose the time frame, and uh, it will pop up what kind of data are available there. Mm -hmm. And then once you click the data, it means you also choose the data uh, format along with it right mm -hmm. then the algorithm that are compatible with it will pop up as well so you just decide which one do you want to compute for example i want to remove the cloud for cloud first then i choose the cloud and the second thing would be um, for example area segment so i use the segment anything um, algorithm to segment mm -hmm. different things and then i need to identify okay this is beans or is this uh, uh, carrots right and then I want to say, okay, what is the uh, annual yield of the beans uh, in average, by average, according to the sunshine um, situation and the the uh, climate uh, data? Then you have different other layers, data and algorithm on, on top of it. So you just mm -hmm. use your logic and click different things and combine the things together. Mm -hmm. I mean, eventually, uh, the idea would be that we can plug the entire backend system with the auto GPT. So we can ask auto GPT, hey, what is the annual yield of a biogas farmland? And chat GPT would like break the task into different level and call mm -hmm. the functions and then calculate an, a, a result for you. Well, that'd be a very exciting uh, workflow and uh, encompassing lots of innovative technologies as well. Yeah, it's kind of like a hugging face, GPT, I would say, but uh, mm -hmm. we are not there yet. So uh, hopefully one day the combination will be perfect. Well, thank you for that introduction to the platform. I'm just curious where you're at in the development of it and what kind of what that feels like to be developing a platform like this. Uh, I mean, all the blockchain project, projects are quite complicated, right? Um, so since we need to use fully homomorphic encryption to protect the data of the uh, constellation operators, so the previous work was mainly to serve the oper uh, constellation operator side, and uh, the core um, uh, cryptography layer is complete and is under security auditing by the Austrian Institute of Technology at the moment. Mm. And now we are focusing on building the compiler and also the Watson runtime to mm -hmm. put the JS algorithm into the block uh, on the blockchain. Let's mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. uh, so once this, that is done and then then the front end is over, we are basically can go to the testnet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. What's what's your call to action? When should people expect to be able to put models onto the platform? Um, I guess it's more like offering a alternative solution. Like if uh, I, I talk to a lot of GIS researchers, a common issue is that they are relying on the public funding, which is extremely difficult to get. And if you're a young researcher, you don't have much chance to get a big funding from by yourself, right? And then you have to ask the big companies to give you some kind of charity funding. So we hope that at some point we can build this kind of community and unite all the researchers together 
then they can be self-standing. Uh, like they don't have to beg in for funding. They can use their algorithm and will help to connect with end users. Once the algorithm is used, they can monetize their research and get the self-sufficient funding for whatever research they want to do. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be, be the most compelling points for the researchers. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, and when, when will people be able to, uh, what's your timeline? How do you think it will pan out in terms of when people will be able to start putting algorithms on the on the platform? Uh, this is a tricky question. We are working on it heavily, but you know the market uh, investment market is not very great at the moment. So we're also trying different ways to gather around the funding. Mm -hmm. But hopefully we can finish the uh, compiler and the Watson uh, runtime by the end of this year. Then mm -hmm. we can uh, bring people on board and uh, kind of test the system. Uh, that would be the most optimistic uh, mm. result, but we'll see how it works. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, if people want to follow along your progress between now and launch, where's the best platform for them to follow you? Uh, I would say we are building a Discord at, at the moment. Uh, okay. So uh, the best way is also always follow our Twitter and uh, join the Discord. We'll release the news in the Discord. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, we will try to release the awesome runtime ASAP so the people can try to test locally and give us some feedback. Say, hey, can you run it locally on this uh, runtime? Mm -hmm. That'll be on GitHub, will it? Oh, yes, yes, it will be. On okay, GitHub. fantastic. I'll put the, the links to your Twitter and your Discord and your GitHub in the show notes. Otherwise, thank you so much for the introduction. It's a fascinating technology stack and they're really exciting. Okay approach you're taking and i look forward to hearing the updates yeah thank you thank you